Today we're hoping to uh, do the vortex generator test. Um, we got the my old nine-year-old Strega that I flew at the Worlds in 2006, and we've mounted a camera to it. And we're going to uh, put some strings on the wing here, and uh, going to see if these vortex generators um, that Frank Williams sent out. Um, are going to do what it, everybody thinks they do. So hopefully the strings will stick to the wing better. Um, we're going to do an A flight with a lot of hard inside corners uh, with no vortex generators. And then we're going to do a B flight with uh, the vortex generators on it. Um, we're going to attach this, you know, attach them in random places across the wing. Let's see where did I put that? Oh, um, Frank sent some good old uh, samples of what we're gonna what we're supposed to do here. So you can see some yarn I think is on that airplane, but we might not put quite as many. But we're gonna give it a shot. Some things we had to do. Um, me and my Mark McKinley let me borrow his uh, PA75. We had a, I flew with a Rojet 65 which was great when the plane was 64 ounces, but we had to add the camera, which is about three to four ounces. I don't remember exactly what it is with my little sled <laughs> uh, configuration on here. And then I put um, a half ounce on each tail, I mean, sorry, each uh, main gear wheel. And then I actually put a little heavier wheels than I'm normally around here. Hopefully, I mean, they're pretty substantially lower than the camera is, and so hopefully, uh, that ounce and a half or ounce and a quarter more weight will balance out for the camera a little bit better than what we had the first time we tried this.
we had to end the test a little early. Um, we didn't complete the full pattern on the last flight. Um, the tomb pipe, um, I put a little maple block extension on it to make it, um, you know, long, wide enough to, or, um, sorry, come out enough to work with the 75, and it came, uh, the maple block popped off. So, rather than ruining my friend's pipe, I just flew out the flight. But I did the triangles and the reverse wing over, and I think those are the two that we're best going to see when you hit a hard corner what it does. Now, I will say from a piloting standpoint, now I'm not sure if this is because it took me about 10 minutes to put uh, the vortex generators on the wing, but when I flew with them on, I definitely, the plane did not slug through corners um, on its insides. It didn't change anything on the outsides, which is what it should be, I believe, um, from them doing their job. I haven't looked at the footage yet to see if you can really tell a difference, but um, I really had no opinion coming into the experiment, um, but it definitely did feel like the plane had a lot more lift, and especially with the accentuated weight, it was really noticeable that I could actually hit a nice square corner all of a sudden. Um, I wasn't able to do that on the first two flights. Um, first flight I was just testing, you know, to make sure that the camera and everything stayed. The second flight was the flight that we actually taped, um, that will show as an A-B to, uh, um, for the experiment. But from a pilot standpoint, I have to say I felt like it did, um, feel like there's more lift. Now they're not on the other side, so it might, maybe next time I'll do it on both, and just from a piloting standpoint to feel like if it's any different. Um, the only thing I can think of is I'm flying right before sundown um, and that 10 minutes might have been enough in the air density. Um, it's gotten a little bit cooler. Um, that might um, be the reason it felt better. I'm not sure. Um, we'll just have to look at the footage and see if we can tell. But it's a fun experiment. Thanks Frank for sending out the um, vortex generators and for the idea. Thanks Mark for letting me borrow your engine. And uh, it was fun.